Hey guys, Keith here, and welcome to episode one of The Impact Report. So basically, I'm going to be using this show as a platform to tell you guys all the uh, news and rumors throughout Impact Wrestling. I don't know if this is going to be a weekly show or maybe even a daily show if uh, the company catches fire and we got a lot going on. So uh, this was the best week, I thought, to start the show as we had huge news break Monday morning where Don Callis and Scott Demore were named executive vice presidents of Impact Wrestling, um, two guys that have been in the wrestling industry for a long time. Both have known each other for about 20 plus years. Um, Don Callis right now is a commentator for New Japan, and he did spend some time in TNA years get back. He was the uh, creator of the Ultimate X match, and as everyone knows that Scott Demore is with the company right now, working with the creative team, so this is huge news for the company. Um, both of them were actually on Talk is Jericho this past week. Actually, it aired today. Um, so it really seems to be a positive outlook for the company, and it was actually Chris Jericho that made the phone call to get this all where it is. Uh, he kind of called them up, uh, Anthem that is, he called up one of the executives and uh, kind of said, you know, what are your guys' plans for this company? If you're going, if it's a tax write-off, I understand what you're doing. If it's this, I get it. But if you're actually interested in taking the company in a direction that's going to be good for the wrestling industry and good in general, um, then hire these two guys, you know, he's a non-biased person with, uh, or an unbiased person that's, that was a WWE superstar for how many years, um, so yeah, like I said, Callis and Demore have known each other for 20 plus years, so they're really looking forward to, uh, working with each other, so they basically, said that their big picture plan for the company is uh, that they want to create a real relationship between Impact and the talent. It's basically a partnership. Um, they want the roster to believe in the future of the company, uh, building up the Impact brand, and then helping Impact helping the talent build their own brand because that's really what it's about is each individual wrestler in their own basically – yeah, their own brand, kind of who they are. Um, so, you know, they, they go on to say that the uh, they plan to let the talent use their gimmick wherever they please. Basically what we've seen last week or two weeks ago where Matt Hardy is now allowed to use his gimmick in WWE. Um, of course, WWE changed that because they want to be able to keep the character as... Uh, as their own, um, and and they really want to build the company around a core group of wrestlers. Basically, they want to. When you think about Impact Wrestling, you think about these guys, which makes sense because they want their own homegrown talent. And if you think about it, well, anyway, well, the way I used to look at TNA is anytime I'd asso associate TNA with anything, it would be AJ Styles. Which they go on to say, you know, they want guys like. Homegrown talent like AJ Styles, Bobby Roode, and Eric Young, and, um, you know, guys that are going to kind of put them on the map. And they want to, of course, this has been a focus of theirs with their global, uh, not domination, but a uh, global takeover, I guess, since that's where they've been going with the company. But they want to focus on expanding worldwide. And uh, like they did. I believe it was earlier this year when they taped in India and they went to a couple other places, but they plan on running tapings all throughout the world. Um, what else we got? Uh, they also, you know, go on to say that the company is not short on talent, but they need to tighten up the presentation and the direction. That's Scott and Don saying that's what they need to do. They say they don't want to be WWE light, WWE junior, whatever you want to look at it as, but they want to develop their own style. And they do have a creative vision for the company, but that's 18 months out. They want to create an alternative product. So these were basically some of the things that were talked about on the Talk to Jericho podcast with Callis and Demore. So if you guys haven't listened to it, I advise you to. It's a great listen, and all three of them just seem happy about the future for Impact Wrestling. And I'm 100% on board with this. 
um, which surprisingly most of the uh, world was as well because it seemed like people were actually going to take Impact Wrestling a little seriously now. This isn't the uh, Dixie Carter or Jeff Jarrett re- regime. Um, On to the rumor mill. Well, these aren't really rumors as we have three contracts expiring in early, I believe early to mid-2018, with the uh, three wrestlers being EC3, Bobby Lashley, and Eddie Edwards. Um, Lashley, I wouldn't be surprised if he does go to WWE since he still has close ties with Paul Heyman, and I'm pretty sure they talk on a regular basis. Um, This would be, he would probably make, have huge matches with Brock Lesnar if they brought him in. Um, Because they're getting short on people that can face Brock Lesnar. Um, EC3, another guy, which I wouldn't be surprised to go to WWE. Um, guy's got a great look, good in the ring, good on the mic. He's got one of the biggest contracts, I think, with Impact, much like Alberto El Patron. And I think with the current direction for Impact, they need to obviously cut money in order to expand. So, unfortunately, we're going to have casualties like this. Um, Eddie Edwards, I believe his contract expires early 2018. Um, I would like to see Impact hold on to him. Uh, But, again, rumor, I think, came up today that WWE is interested in him, so wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Another, well, we actually had Laurel Van Ness recently ask for her release. At least that was rumored. Um, So we're uncertain about her future in the company. Uh, the Knockouts Division really took a, a hit lately after losing, uh, well, possibly losing her and uh, Gail Kim retiring and the uh, other women that have left the company. Uh, but there is some positive news. Uh, Johnny Impact and both Taya Valkyrie have signed, uh, re-signed with Impact. Uh, Johnny has definitely made an impact, pun intended, um, since his debut, I think it was back in August at Gauntlet for the Gold. He's kind of been a uh, main spotlight for, or in his stay in Impact so far, and uh, definitely a guy to build around as he definitely has a following, always gets huge reactions. Taya, excellent addition to the Knockouts division. I'm sure she hasn't done quite what she wanted to so far as she was unable to attend Bound for Glory and the Canada tapings due to personal reasons. I think it had something to do with her visa, um, which was very unfortunate for all of us because she was supposed to have that match with um, Rosemary at Bound for Glory, which was a very anticipated match by myself and many fans out there. And I'm sure if she had made it to the Canada taping, she would have played a uh, crucial role in the knockouts tournament. So... Fortunately, this week they uh, the viewership came back, and I believe they only did two hundred twenty six thousand viewers, which is down a lot from last week, uh, about thirty thousand. Uh, it was one of the lowest drawing shows, but again, it's prime football season; they were up against a lot, so can't really worry about this stuff now, as we have direction for the company in the future, and. Uh, We learned that Impact will be back taping in Orlando January 10th through the 15th, and these will be the first tapings that Callis and Damore will be in their new roles. Um, I believe they're planning on taking taping four to five weeks at a time rather than their 10 weeks that they've been doing. Personally, what I'd like to see them do is tape four weeks at a time, have a pay-per-view special, or not a pay-per-view, but a live show special, and then tape after that. I just feel like that's a bigger draw with Impact being taped all the time. Everything's available online. You know what happens. You're not going to get the people in. But they have a lot to do. Um, Hopefully, I I don't know if this is... it, It seems like a lot of people have an issue with this since it's called Impact Wrestling and their television show's name is Impact Wrestling. I I don't understand why they didn't just use the explosion because they already have everything for it. I don't think, I think it's just taped now for um, the Global Wrestling Network. I don't even know if it airs anywhere, but 
I'm sure this is going to be one of the moves they make with actually getting a TV show name. Um, not that it's really a big deal, but I think it'll be able to establish them as, you know, this is our television show. But definitely moving in the right direction. I'm very excited for 2018. I'm hoping we're getting on to something here. I, I love there being more alternatives. Uh, recently, obviously, I've gotten back into Impact Wrestling since I've been doing these reviews. I've been into New Japan, Ring of Honor. So the more wrestling, the better. Competition is always going to create the best environment. So this has been episode one of the Impact Report. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you, well, like always, if you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.